everything that happens in Lizzie related to accounting is automatically taken care of for you. So there's very little that you have to do with respect to managing the general ledger. In this video, we're going to show you how to actually look directly at the general ledger to help you with researching things, uh, looking for problems, and, and even creating your own entries into the general ledger to, to take care of certain things that, that may have happened um, where you're trying to either correct something. Um, it's it's going to be very, very rare for you to have to create manual adjustments in the, in the system. Um, it, because as you go through all of the different features, you'll see that most everything that you're going to do on a, on a given day, there's a way to actually handle it through accounting, receivables, payables, invoicing, inventory, those kind of things. But to, to locate anything in, on the general ledger, the first thing you're going to do is come to the GL control, which is accounting general ledger locate. We can start by putting in the entries for the date range that we want to look at. Um, so if we if we locate those, we can see that you know that here's all the entries that have happened, and this is not related to anything particular. These are just literally all the GL hits that hit for today. Um, if I wanted to narrow them down for a particular invoice number, PO number, item number, and so forth, you can do that over here on the right. So we can tell it that we want to only look at a particular thing. You basically choose what that thing is and then fill in the, the value of that thing here. We can also look at only th things that have happened for a particular account type or a specific account. So, and you can, if you come over here in either of these lists, you can hit the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and highlight multiple entries um, here for the, for the different things if you want to have multiple accounts selected. Um, so you have quite a bit of functionality here. We can tell it a location if we're a multi-location. We can tell it that I only want to look at entries that I created or that, you know, someone in the company uh, did. Um, and then some of the other options we have here are that we can export the result to an Excel uh, CSV file. Um, we can tell it to use a beginning balance of zero, which means that as it counts down, it'll give us the ending balance based on that date range that we chose. We can tell it to only look at it by a current contact record. We can tell it to show only manual entries. So as an example, when Lizzie creates a, a set of GL hits for an invoice, those invoice, those entries are tagged to an invoice. If we do a set of entries for adjusting inventory, they're tagged to an inventory item. Well, if you go in and create your own entries, which you're going to learn how to do in just a moment, those entries are manual. They, they are not tied to anything that Lizzie did. They're tied to something that a user specifically went in here and did. And so showing only manual entries gives you a really quick way, if your P&L looks like it's off on a particular account, the first thing to do is to come over here and look and see if there's any manual entries for that particular account for that date range to make sure that you haven't caused the problem or someone in the company hasn't caused the problem themselves. Um, and in the event, they can just reverse it or fix whatever it is that they messed up. Now, we also have, uh, including departmental inflation hits, um, these are actually the, the hits that were done based on departmental accounting. Normally, you don't want to see those on the general ledger because they're, they're only used for departmental side of things. Um, and then we've got show offsetting hits and then exclude hits from invoices. Now, this is mainly a research uh, mechanism where if I'm trying to find uh, an entry for, let's say, a part sales account, and th it doesn't make sense what's showing up on the P&L, let's say, and I want to actually exclude all of the things from, the, from an invoice to see if maybe we inadvertently wrote a check to that account or maybe we paid, we created a purchase order to the wrong account or we did something somewhere else that has thrown off that account. So this allows me to be able to just dump the, the invoice side of those accounts and only look at the, the external hits that may have happened for it. Um, a couple other things to look at is as when you get your results of the GL locate control, you can see down here that we actually have the ability to change the date. So you can backdate or forward date things uh, on the GL itself. Um, you can change account numbers on, on certain things. So um, you've got some control down here in the GL itself to, to kind of help out with some of that stuff. 
Um, we also have a location. So if, if a location was set incorrectly, you can change the location on the particular entry. Um, and to do that, you actually hit the pencil here and select the new location. Um, so, uh, and, and then up here at the top, you've got view, L, view GL details and view account descriptions. Um, so by default, when this thing comes up, um, you may have kind of a summary view of what's going on. And if you want to see that extra detail, uh, you can turn that on where you get the actual uh, transaction ID, gen ID, and user and all that stuff. Now, the transaction ID is the last thing I want to talk about on this particular control. And it basically relates all things together that happened at the same time. So when you do an invoice and you cash that invoice out, you're going to get a transaction ID that is going to match for all of those entries that happened on the GL at that particular point in time. So it's a, a really nice way to kind of see, okay, well, this is a transaction. What all happened during this transaction? So I would copy that transaction, come up here and tell it, okay, show me everything for that GL transaction ID. And then I would just paste that ID into this field. So the that's all there really is to the locate control and it, it is a, a a vastly important thing to know how to use for researching general ledger issues now the last thing we're going to talk about is how to actually create a manual adjustment on the gl again you're not going to do this very often but all you're going to do is go to create adjustment and pick the date of your adjustment fill in the description for that adjustment fill in any other information this none of this is required information to put in here but you can fill in if you want to link it to a po or you want to link it to whatever you can fill that information in um, and then down here at the bottom we're going to actually fill in the amounts that we want to to adjust now as with any double entry accounting system, debits have to equal credits. So we want to make sure that when we're done, before we hit the process button here, that we have made sure that all of the amounts for our debits equal our credits. So as an example, if I wanted to take uh, money out of the petty cash fund, let's say $10, and I want to debit that account, then I can come down here and take it out of the bank account and then we would want to make sure that we credit that account. So it is important that this says whatever equals whatever so that it's it's equal before this is going to actually work. And if you try to do it um, without making them equal, it'll actually give you an error. So that's pretty much all there is to working with the general ledger. And again, most everything that you're going to be doing on the general ledger is done automatically for you from all of the different portions of the application that you're using.